Okay, in this video I want to talk a little bit about layout. I have the same view application, the view-based application that we were working with before. So my first view has a label and a button. My second view has a label and a button. I've added a call to a function here. You can see the go back function from inside the script tag is being called here. There's a keyword event which is grabbing the mouse event and passing it up here to this function. Not that I'm using it, but it gets passed in. And then I'm calling the pop to first view, which goes back to the very first view displayed within the view stack. So in my my views application, first view was defined as views.myViewsHomeView. And that was down here, my view home view, that was the first page or view that we saw. So if I run this. It's going now. There we go. So here's the application. Here's the first view, the My Views Home View. If I click on this button, it takes me to page two. Click on this one, it goes back. I can just step back and forth between these two views. Click on the button, and there it goes. But you'll notice the label is buried underneath the button. So not a very usable interface. I have a label and a button, but because I haven't specified what kind of layout I want, they automatically go back to the default, which is give me an X and Y coordinate, and that's where I'll go, and that's where I'll be stuck. So I want to do some dynamic resizing repositioning. Default best practice is to come inside here and add a layout tag. You'll notice this is my first one of the Spark visual components. We don't count the declarations or the script tag, but the first visual component is this layout thing inside the view. Inside here, I'm going to specify that I want to have a vertical layout. Now I can just leave it at that. When I run this, my application comes up, and there we go. The button is now below this label by default. Now on page two, we haven't changed it, so it's still like that, but on this page, everything's going to be vertically stacked. If I want to create some space, you can see, start typing padding, the four values for padding come up, and I can create an amount of pixels of padding that I want to have around my whole application. So this will help keep all of the content away from the edges. That's, and there we go. Now I've got 20 pixels here and 20 pixels here. And it'll do that for the entire interface. Now we've got to fix number two. I'm going to just copy this, jump over to two, and I'm going to paste that in there, run it. There we go, back and forth between the two. Padding, vertical layout. Now the alternative to using the layout with the vertical layout is that we can use groups. So there is a group tag. You can see I can just put in group and then specify which way I want to go. Or, even faster, we can put in a V group to horizontally group things together, or an H group. So if I go in here and create this H group, I'm going to put this stuff up inside of here. If I hold down the Alt button and arrow up, can see it shifts everything that I have highlighted. Tab pushes it in. Okay, so my horizontal group has got these things inside of it. So although everything on my page is vertically spaced, if I go below this, I put this element here, this element is going to show up below this one. So the whole view, it's layout vertical. So this is my first vertical element, this is my second vertical element. Inside here, these things want to go across the page. So we'll save that, we run it, and this is on page two, so once we go over there, there we are. So these two things are grouped together horizontally, and then this one is below the horizontal group. And that's 
the basics of creating layout. We're doing horizontal and vertical groupings. There's also a tile-based layout where we can create kind of a, an HTML table layout, but uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. For now, vertical and horizontal layouts are what we want. One last thing to mention, with your vertical and horizontal groups, you can also add the padding that we were talking about previously. So if I wanted to put padding bottom, let's say 75 pixels worth, or you can use percentages here as well. When I run this, I'm going to create space below this H group, so between the H group and this label on page 2. There it is. There's that 75 pixel space being created.